Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is August 9th, 2019, halfway through the summer, sad to say, uh, but uh, here we are. And um, it's been a little quiet on eBay last week, but there was a couple of big auctions that went through, and there's some things closing this week we'll take a look at. A lot of stuff going on over at Catawiki, which is good. And before we get started, I wanted to mention something that's going to be on this week's newsletter. If you don't get the newsletter, subscribe to it, and then you'll get to see this when it goes up. Because as you know, many of you know, we do a weekly feature. Uh, we, we put our own video in, and then we always try to include something else uh, beside it, another video or something interesting. And uh, I came across this series a while ago that was put out by the Chinese government um, regarding Ching De Chen and the, and the porcelain industry. And uh, this is a travelogue thing, but it's actually really well done. And there's a couple of them we're going to... We're going to be putting them in this week and next, and uh, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a, a very interesting look at the Chinese porcelain industry, its its history, uh, and, 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 and what it's like over there. It's, it's actually very fascinating. So I hope you take the time to watch the videos we throw in each week. Now, uh, moving along over to the fakes of the week. <laughs> um, this is something that uh, came up. It's starting to get bids for some reason. It's got a Ming mark on it. It's not old. Um, if you're watching this, uh, probably best take it off your watch list. This is brand new, and uh, it's a copy, okay? And it's done sort of loosely based on some Ming pieces and some Kangxi pieces, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but it's it's not old. It's up to it's got 19 bids, which is amazing. It's up to 242 dollars, and uh, it closes uh, uh, on Saturday. So if you got it on your watch list, you better better best take it off, okay? And then there's this. These pieces are starting to turn up, and it's a little bit alarming. These are the uh, well-known Empress Dowager. They call them Sheik Sheik pieces. And um, this, this one is a copy, um, and they're starting to come into the market increasingly. Uh, here's a picture of the foot rim on it, the bottom of it. It's got that, that grayed-out, dirty, rotten-looking foot. And uh, uh, it's got all the little, you know, the little doodad characteristics and so forth, the seals that you see on the originals. But pay close attention to the glaze. It's uh, too thick, too yellow, too glossy, too, 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 all the way across the board. Um, it's, a, it's a copy, um, in my opinion. It's got 10 bids. It ends on Saturday. It doesn't look like a lot of people are falling for it. But um, it, is, it is not an old piece. That's not an old piece. And then there's this. I'm amazed. This has gotten a bid. Um, this is from a seller who handles m nearly all reproductions. Um, and this is an obviously bad Tibetan enameled uh, um, uh, Bodhisattva Shukiyama. Um, it is, uh, it's got one bid at $179. Uh, the seller is Elite Collectibles. Um, th they sell junk. I'll just say it, um, all drunk. Uh, so just avoid it. As you, a lot of you have seen who these sellers are, so I'm not telling you you don't know. But those of you who don't know, Elite Collectibles, he's got uh, about 718 feedbacks, and um, all he sells is copies. All right, and then on to, uh, let's see, this one. Let's let the page load. There we go. I've had four inquiries about this vase, um, and somebody actually emailed me a link to it. Um, this vase is problematic, okay? It looks good. Um, actually, if you watch that video um, that I just suggested, uh, there's a scene in it where somebody is decorating a, a Millefiori vase very much like this, and uh, it's brand new. Um, um, that's why I, I would love people to watch that video. But uh, I do not like this vase. I do not think it is authentic. I think the colors are wrong. The color combinations are wrong. I think this, uh, this, this, this base decoration is a, a bit whimsical and fanciful. It's a fantasy thing. The interior uh, of the mouth just looks too new. Um, I'm, I'm not buying this as an antique. Um, I'm not looking at it as an antique either. So uh, just a word, word of the wise. It's what I told everybody that, that, that made the inquiry um, through the uh, uh, preview assistant and uh, second opinion. And then on to this. The seller says he thinks it's early 20th century. This is not early 20th century. This piece is brand spanking new. All right. Um, more and more of these pieces are turning up and people are, are getting them. And, and they look at the backs of them. They're fired. They're burned. They look good. But always look at the artwork. The decoration on this is just looks like it was done by a child. 
um, a young child, four-year-old. Uh, it is absolute rubbish. The, the, the decoration is, is it's not well done. Um, it's just a, it's a disaster. Um, so uh, don't go after it. It ends tomorrow. It's only up to $13, but I'm afraid somebody, uh, a few people might have it on watch list. They're going to jump on it at the end and get stuck with that. You don't want that. All right. And this is something that uh, I came across. And it's being sold as Republic period. Okay, this is not a Republic period plate. It is partially transfer decorated. Here's the back of it. It's got the fake uh, chin lung mark. It's got the little holes to hang it with. This plate was probably made in the, uh, judging by the looks of it, uh, was probably made in the 60s, maybe even the 70s. Um, it is not a Republic period example at all. Uh, it's 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 an abomination, and it's probably partly stenciled and then filled in by color with colors, maybe decorated in Hong Kong. So, at any rate, so you want to avoid that. That's up to two hundred and thirteen dollars, and I think it's because they've they've marked it as uh, being Republic period, and it's not. All right, if you've got if you've got a bid on it, retract it. That's all I can tell you. I'm sorry. Eh, negative news. Okay, now let's move on to the newsletter last week. There were some good things. And it was a busy week um, uh, for, 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 for July and August because usually this time of the year, as everybody knows, half of Europe has gone on vacation. Um, um, uh, we're taking some time off this month um, in, to, to relax a bit. My family members are going away and everything else, so here we are. But uh, there were some nice things. We're going to start over here at Katowicki. There was this pair of Tung Chi butterfly vases with the uh, uh, um, wonderful yellow ground, good strong yellow ground on this, but not too yellow, not too bright, just about right. And it's got the double happiness marks on it. Uh, as you know, the double happiness marks are uh, you know, related to marriages and fidelity and so forth. And these plates did quite well. They brought $7,780. But it's a pair, and they're Tung Chi, and they look to be certainly be marking period to me. They were very, very pretty and in very nice condition. And then the other thing that was a really great buy on here, if you're paying attention last week, I had pointed these out. I thought these are really nifty. Um, they, they probably had a little grinding done to them and so forth, but these, these nice old bottle vases, these rose water bottles that were done in the Kangxi period are often made into ewers and other things when they got to Europe. And this was a really nice pair. And uh, look at this. They, the pair went for $408. That was a good buy. That was a nice buy. Those things are elegant. And they were of decent size, too. They were almost uh, about, about 10 inches tall, um, but, but very attractive and nice color and good quality porcelain. So for 400 bucks, how could you go wrong? All right, and then on to this. This was something that our friend Josh had up over at Chamberlain's. We're going to go through a few of the things they had. Uh, this was a nifty thing. I pointed it out when it first went up. Um, it a wonderful Japanese bronze, uh, uh, late Edo, early early Meiji period probably. But very nice surface on it, done like a bamboo section of bamboo. One guy emailed me and said, you know, that's bamboo. And uh, I, I, I knew it was. But at any rate, there it is. It's beautifully done. It's got seashells and things growing on it. Um, uh, you know, in the casting, there it is. It was marked. So if you're a Japanese bronze collector, you can certainly look it up. There's a snail going up the neck of it. It's just a nifty thing. And I think this was a great buy, $480 for a really cool bronze. Um, uh, I, I love the patina on it. I like the shape. I like the form. And I like quirky, earthy sorts of uh, bits of Asian art, whether it's from China or Japan or, or Korea. I don't care. Um, I just like that. Nice rustic thing. Good object. And uh, this also went through. It's an, a very well-known type of um, a Ming uh, Celadon incense burner. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. All right, looks just the way it should. And it brought exactly, just about exactly what they always bring. This particular form, these compressed forms, late Ming, uh, $1,525. That's sort of the range for these. They, they, If the foot's broken, it might bring, you know, 1000 if it's been reattached. But if it's all there, that's sort of the range they bring in. You know, 1300 to $1,800, depending on the, the color, has a big influence. Uh, this was a nice one. It was a typical one, and it did fine. And then he had, Josh had this up. This was a neat thing. I like this. And I liked it because it was big. This thing was 20 inches tall, uh, probably early 19th century, beautifully decorated, good colors, good artwork on it. And I think it went for a very reasonable price, $2,140. Keeping in mind the size of it, this thing was big, 20 inches. You do not see this form often in 20-inch tall vases. 
from either the 18th or the 19th century. It's just a neat thing. And uh, then he had this up, this big who form piece um, with a, a Chin Lung mark on the bottom. I don't think it was Chin Lung. I think it was probably a uh, uh, Dalguan period, uh, or, or early to mid 19th century, somewhere in there. Beautifully done. Here's the mark on the base. Uh, it had that rusticated Chin Lung mark, which a lot of people will, will, will bid on, chase it on just on that alone. But here it is, had nice work on it. And I think this went for a good price. Um, not too much, not too little. About $12,406. It was big, it was good looking, and um, uh, it could, you may be seeing this again at an auction somewhere around the world. All right, um, just uh, things like that tend to turn up again because people like it, it's big and gutsy. Then he had this Kang Shi bowl. This was a really nice little Mark and Period Kang Shi bowl. Interesting pattern on it. Uh, uh, well done base. There's the there's the rain mark on there. Quickly drawn. You can really see how they zip that signature right on there. Um, but good deep cobalt blue. Look at the color of this cobalt. Nice saf rich sapphire blue. Nicely done foot. The bottom is a little bit. Uh, the glaze there is a little bit ripply, almost uh, not chicken skin, but uh, they develop a little texture sometimes on the bottoms of these. Um, here's another shot of the of the back of it. Good looking bowl, and uh, it did fine. It brought $4,200, but it was a nice example, unusual decoration, and in good condition. And then on to this, the robe. This beautiful apricot ground robe, uh, early 20th century. Uh, very nice work all the way around, a lady's uh, surcoat and formal robe, but uh, beautiful uh, needlework. Always check the needlework. How good is the needlework? <clears throat> and this had really fine needlework. Little tiny chain stitches all over the thing. Um, here's a view of the uh, collar of it flattened out. The guy did a good job with the pictures on this. It's really sold it. The interior looks a little bit uh, tiny bits of wear, but nothing much. Some of these ripply areas, they look like tears. They're not. It's just folds in the silk. There it is. Okay, there's a closer shot of it. Beautiful damask silk, silk liner on this. It's a good robe. And uh, it did fine. It brought $2,111, which is a good price for, for, for a non-court robe. Uh, but beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful work. And then over to this was the, this was a neat buy. Um, this was a little Kangxi, uh, you know, the sort of rosette pinwheel decoration with gilt and iron red. Uh, I think the spout, uh, the, the seller mentioned it, the spout looked like it probably got chipped at one point and uh, was polished down maybe a, a quarter inch or so. But still, a nice authentic Kangxi teapot. Um, there's the bottom of it, there's the lid, had a little bite out of it there. But this was a nice original thing. And, uh, it didn't bring a lot of money. If, again, this is one of those things, if you don't have an endless wallet to chase everything around, here's a good authentic Kang Shi uh, teapot for under 200 bucks. All right, it's got a couple of issues, but, but certainly pretty and worth owning and nice to look at. All right, and then on to this, this Yongshen with the, with the, with the Femi Noir uh, rim and lots of deep, deep Femil uh, rose decoration in the middle with the cockerel. Beautiful yellow on that bird. Uh, beautiful mixed with a little orange and then the yellow flowers highlighting around it and so forth. And uh, this was a nice dish. This was a very nice dish. There's the back of it. It looks just the way it should look. That nice uh, sort of oatmeal-y uh, ivory foot rim. And uh, this was a good sized dish. As I recall, this thing was 11 inches in diameter. And it went for $343, which I think was a good buy. I'm going to make double check the size. 11 and 3 eighths inches. Almost, you know, so almost 11 and a half inches. It was half an inch shy of being a charger. Um, that was a good buy. That was a nice piece for uh, under, under $350. Good piece. Came out of the Netherlands. This was another good buy for the week, a little Yongchen uh, uh, a lotus form teapot uh, with, it, with its under tray, no less. Um, I think it had a couple of little nicks and divots and had a repair to the lid, which is very common on these. They, the lids always seem to get dropped at some point in their 300-year life, especially if they're used regularly. And these were, had a hairline there, so forth. But regardless, it was a pretty good buy, $413 for a rare form. Um, nice looking thing. This came out of a, uh, uh, from a seller over in the Netherlands. A lot of stuff in the Netherlands. Jeez. Uh, and then this, that was, this is that big, uh, uh, export platter that I thought so much of, um, that had the old gilt repair on the rim, but was very big. This was a 19 inch plate. 
And uh, in the end, it did fine, even with the repair. It brought $558. But what a great example of porcelain. Uh, as I've said many times, if this was a this was a piece done in that quality in the Chinese taste uh, for the Chinese market, that 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 giant charger would probably be worth about five thousand dollars. All right, because of the size, you don't see 19-inch domestic market chargers very often. All right, <clears throat> and now over to this: the early 20th century uh, uh, hanging uh, hanging textile with uh, lots of gold thread on it, lots of bats, beautiful uh, ruby red ground, wonderful color on this. God, that had nice color. And lots of fine stitching. Again, always check, check the detail images and, and get in there and see how, see how much fine work is on it because that really drives the price. This had a lot of it and had these beautiful corners done onto it and so forth. And in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $1,913, but in fantastic condition probably done around the you know the first quarter of the 20th century it looks newer and I suspect it's because this has been stored if silk textiles don't aren't given much air and are stored in nice dark places and dry environments the colors last a long time every once in a while you'll see a very early piece of Chinese silk from the Ming dynasty that's been well cared for and out of the light and the colors on it are just stun stunningly pretty and the same for Qing pieces because a, a fabric like this this fabric if you hung this for a month in a near a sunny in a sunny window, it would be almost pink. It would suck the color right out of it very rapidly. All right, and then on to this, the little box. I like this box. It had nice inscriptions on it, good wear. Um, uh, didn't look like a copy to me. Uh, indications of use and all that. And uh, in the end, it did fine. It brought four hundred and eighty-two dollars, which is sort of in the range they bring. If you're a desktop collector, that's a nice thing. And then over here to the uh, uh, late Ming um, uh, dish with the deer under the pine tree with the ascending crane and all that. This was a nice plate. I like the way they do their photography. These are from uh, antiques and uh, uh, in, uh, in collectibles over in uh, uh, ceramics and collectibles over in the Netherlands. The two, the two guys over there that have so much on eBay. I think they've got over 2,000, 2,400 listings on here right now. This was one of them. It was an auction item. They sell fixed price, too. Uh, it went for $360, which is a perfectly good price for one of these, this sort of early coastal Mitsuki wear, um, late, late 1600s. And then here was another robe. Um, this was, again, another robe probably from the, maybe from the 20s, a little later. But very nice work on it with all the cranes flying in and out and flying around. And uh, had very good quality, uh, uh, again, good quality work all the way around. Uh, the collar up here, it shows almost absolutely no signs of wear or use. Uh, during the 20s, a lot of robes were bought in China by Westerners or were exported from China to foreign markets because uh, there was a lot of interest in them. A lot of women uh, collected Chinese silks. Uh, missionary women would come back with trunks of these things. And um, it brought $898, which is about right for that, right on the money. All right, and then on to this. This was one of my favorite things, just because I liked the package. I liked the Vitruvian scroll bronze work that was added when it got to Europe, and uh, I liked the uh, crackle of the uh, of the glaze. Uh, nice looking piece right there. And uh, how did it do in the end? It did pretty well. It brought a thousand dollars, thousand fifty-five dollars for that little inkwell. But it was a good thing. Good thing. All right, and then on to this. The this was the, one of the last things that was in. Um, uh, Chamberlain Antiques was that big Kung Shi Femi Ver uh, plate with the riders and the, and the women in the window. It had a little bit of wear up here around the scene, a little wearing, a little bit of wear to the enamels and so forth. Um, but but nice, good looking foot, typical Kung Shi foot on there, that ivory uh, color, nice and smooth, well rounded. And uh, here's some of the decoration up close. You can see there's little bits of losses of enamel. These blue enamels are notoriously chippy. Um, as you can see on the saddle, some of it, the purple violet color came off, some on the hat, and so forth. It happens a lot with these for some reason. At any rate, um, it, it must be brittle. At any rate, it did pretty well. It brought $4,755, but it was big, and it was a desirable pattern. And uh, how, how big was this? I forget exactly. It was, it was good size, though. It was like, yeah, 15 inches. Nice big bowl. It did great. There you are. All right. Now let's take a look and see what's going on this coming week. 
Uh, first thing is, um, um, some of you, I uh, got a couple, of nice emails about they like this page. This is the new Catawiki page. We're still working on it. We're still tweaking it around. But um, there's a lot of new stuff that uh, popped up on here this week. Lots of, lots of 18th century and late 17th century material, some 19th century and so forth. So you want to check that out. And then on eBay this week, there's a bunch of things. Again, uh, one of our, our people we watch has got some fans, fans coming up. This is a particularly nice one. Very broad uh, uh, area of painting of a, of a terrace uh, landscape scene, first half of the 19th century, and very nice silver and, and uh, enamel-worked uh, uh, blades. Uh, beautiful quality. There, there are the faces. Good detail. Nice shading. Lots of lots of uh, detail in this these pain this painting, including a, a pet over here, <laughs> and uh, we'll see how that does. It should do pretty well. It's up to five hundred and seventy dollars. It closes on Monday, but if you're a fan collector, check it out this week in the newsletter because we're going this is going to have quite a, a few fans. And uh, then there's this this very nice and, and tightly patterned uh, kung shi bowl with a shaped uh, sort of lotus rim on it. And uh, that's going to close on uh, Sunday. It's up to uh, $67. I think it's got some room to go. And uh, then there's this very nice uh, little Yongshen uh, cup and saucer, a bowl and saucer. Um, but I like the scene on it a lot. I like this scene with the kids um, all playing out in, the, in it's sort of in a field. And you see them uh, with, with uh, livestock and goats roaming around and so forth. Um, and what's this on the bottom here? There we go. An old uh, old collection label, more, Mr. Garland, um, and I suspect that it's probably just perfectly authentic. The seller is Alfred Ceramics over in um, the U.K., and he's over in Brighton. He gets nice things, and he's, he's, he's accurate on his descriptions. You can rely on the guy. And uh, then on to this, this nice-looking uh, late Qing uh, robe uh, with uh, this rather unusual skirt across the bottom. With the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the ascending panels and then these flowers sewn into them. You see it on some of these later robes. I like it. Um, and then all the butterflies and so forth. And you see the way, the way the butterflies are painted here. They were painted exactly the same way on porcelains during this time period, the first quarter of the 20th century. And you'll see these uh, famille rose and femi ver uh, bowls that were done. And they used this sort of very elaborate looking uh, butterfly decorations. All right, it was popular, so they put it on silk and they put it on porcelain. And then on to this. This is a nice thing. It's got a little, few bangs and bumps to it and so forth, but uh, this is enameled silver. And Chinese enameled server, silver is rather unusual. It's fairly rare. It's nearly always signed and marked on the bottom. But this was a nice example. Um, uh, we'll see what this thing does. But, but it's got a few nicks and dings to it and so forth but rather unusual. It's up to $314, and let's see where that goes. So I'm sure everybody that collects has looked up the maker's mark, and that'll have an impact on the price. And then on to this, this Pak Tong, I mean, uh, uh, Yixing, rather, uh, over pewter teapot. It's a, it's a nice little pear-shaped pot. Uh, it's got inscriptions on it, Yixing liner. Uh, you want to check that out. It just went up. It literally just went up about a few hours ago. It's got one bid, and it closes in nine days. There's another nice big dragon panel right here with these great little tight rondelles around it. The fabric it's mounting on is a little bit worse for wear. I, you might want to remount it. But um, and this, this area here got uh, fringed out a little bit. But the, art, the area where all the artwork is looks pretty good except for this one split. But the rest of it, the, these bands at the bottom with the dragons and at the top are really nice. I'm kind of surprised the guy didn't cut them out and just sell these two dragon strips uh, because those things are highly desirable. All right, it's up to $92, closes in five days. And uh, then there's one of these little uh, early 18th century dishes. Kangxi, uh, the, the seller Kangxi 4219, I think is his seller name. He has a few things on this week. He has a very good eye. He gets good things. And then there's this uh, uh, brown cocoa ground uh, dragon robe. Nice looking robe. Um, a very good quality, early 20th century. Here's uh, some more of it here here but in good condition again it looked like it might have been stored in a trunk for some time uh, overall very nice shape and uh, it's up to a thousand thirty three dollars it has a reserve on it I don't know where you put the reserve uh, if you're interested in things like this and you see the reserve sign sometimes you can just write the the seller and ask them what's your reserve on it you know and uh, they, they, they will often tell you if you've had that experience you know what I mean they'll they'll say oh yeah it's, uh, 
you know, it's the uh, the reserve is three grand. If the reserve is three thousand on that, it's 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 certainly worth that. But just as a heads up, and then there's a, we have several of these nice looking rank badges that are also in good vibrant colors, good condition, um, that are going to be in the newsletter this week. All right. And that's about it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to us yet over at bitamount.com for the newsletter and you're not using it, please do come over and use it. Use it to help you find things. And if you haven't subscribed yet here on YouTube, I hope you do. Uh, we do these videos once a week. Uh, feel free, please leave a comment or uh, uh, give us a thumbs up. We like thumbs ups. And uh, um, that's about it. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll be back next week. It's going to be kind of quiet uh, uh, around here for the next uh, uh, probably three weeks. But we'll we'll be we'll be taking care of the site and doing things. And uh, stay in touch. Have a nice weekend. All righty. Bye bye.